We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I believe we'll begin our session now. It's on the hour. So I wanted to say hello from wherever you might be tuning in. And we're here for this IGF 2021 20 minute lightning talk entitled Rebuilding Trust a path toward more holistic cybersecurity. And my name is Kristen Little. I'm senior manager of public affairs at IEEE Standards Association. And I'm here with Nishan Chovachandran. And he is a founder and CEO of a company called Iron Lakes. It's a company that empowers businesses and civil society to address and solve challenges through innovations in AI, spatial computing, and of course, cybersecurity. He also happens to be the chair of, and a co-chair of two IEEE SA Standards Association Industry Connections programs, which are programs that bring together people to discuss um, various issues prior to possible standardization. And one of those is called Trustworthy Technical Implementations of Children's Online and Offline Experiences, really short name for that one. Um, and the other one is AI-Driven Innovations for Cities and People. Um, so through this lightning talk, we welcome your questions and your comments. Um, just put it in the chat or raise your hand. We'll be keeping our eye on that. And uh, now Nishan, hello. As a former UK police officer and a high level cybersecurity advisor for the UK government, you have years of experience with bespoke cybersecurity operational activity in the UK public sector. And I wonder if maybe you could give us a brief description what's meant, what is meant by cybersecurity and what that encompasses, and maybe give us a glimpse or a postcard of where this whole issue is going. Sure, absolutely, Kristen, and um, you know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, everyone here. I really like that intro video, actually, and I was thinking that pretty much puts what I wanted to say, you know, very aptly, so perhaps, you know, I'm, I'm redundant in what I'm going to be talking about now, thinking about trust and whatever, but um, no, yeah, as 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 you say, um, yeah, I've got some interesting experience, and um, I happen. I liked how you said I I I. It just so happens that I I uh, I'm doing this work with IEEE. Um, of course, I think it was a bit more by design rather than coincidence, of course. But um, but yeah, but as as you said, cybersecurity. It's it's a term that I think is thrown around more and more, and I think a lot of people perhaps know it know of the term now compared with five, even 10 years ago, if you said cybersecurity, people might not necessarily know what that is. I think that, that uh, element of uh, unknowing is still there. So traditionally, cybersecurity, people refer or think of it as really what I would define as IT security. So the, the security of any technological or IT deployment. And usually you think of IT security, you then think of antiviruses and hacking and, and, uh, and all of these things, right? Which of course, is an important part of cybersecurity. But when we're actually talking, well, at least in my definition and the, and the more broader definition of, of cybersecurity, what we're actually talking about is, or in terms of cyber, is really the uh, intersectionality between technology and humanity. So whenever there's any kind of interaction between those two uh, spheres, if you want to just define them that way, um, so the cybersecurity, the cybersecurity element is, is securing that those interactions so whether that's through a technological security implementation with the various encryption protocols or whatever it is in securing data but also looking at legal frameworks and governance frameworks and 
you know how you know an accountability uh, and and all of these things to really define how how these processes are used so not just securing the technology but how is it used why is it used um what the technology is actually doing itself um securing the individual's use of that um so if you're going to be using a particular solution or platform or service then same thing you know how do you access your information how is your information stored who uses your information uh, uh, and whatnot um as you, as you mentioned uh with two of the particular initiatives that i'm involved with with ieee um one being the ai for cities um and people so again that very much touches on that so how is ai being used in the cities and communities contexts um in terms of delivering public services and and and, and that kind of thing and not just how cities are deploying it but looking at best uses and also failures and how do we learn from that to be able to create a unified and standardized approach to delivering those services and then from the uh, trustworthy technological implementations program which we, we, should, we should really come up with a shorter name i think for that so perhaps the audience can um, suggest um, something a bit catchier but the idea of that is, is it's a very broad program really looking at technologies uh, in the child centric space or child facing or young people facing technologies and already, as you can imagine that ranges from education to gamification to the use of a, of a device in any such way or yeah and we're talking about online and offline, so it could just be that there's an interaction with a technology that doesn't necessarily require an Internet connection, but being in a physical space where there is a use of a technology or or, or something on the back end. Um, and we've got some collaboration or we're going to be signing some collaboration with some research in research institutions and we're looking to get more people on board with that but i could spend the whole time talking about that project because it's very detailed so i'll, I'll yeah I'll, I'll put a pin in that for now um but uh i hope i answered your question i, I, I feel like I, I i went into cybersecurity a bit and i might not have answered uh the question but oh to, just to give I, I was just looking back on it the postcard the glimpse of where we're at um yeah, so as I said, cybersecurity being quite overarching, um, technology very much has, uh, or the prolificity of technology has, uh, you know, really curved upwards. And even even in the last ten years, where where, where we look at um, the use of devices and how people use devices, and 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 you know, the amount of devices that people use, but also actually looking beyond that and looking at how technology is being used by government, uh, governments or, or, or even private entities, um, the algorithmic use um, and, and the processing of your data for decision making, how, how certain services are being delivered to individuals, how data is being collected on individuals for whatever reason. And that's not just from a public service point of view, but also thinking on how, you know, your, your consumer interactions, for example, and and one I think the the um the pandemic in particular I think has really expedited that and really uh, I think um I don't want to go as far as saying brute forced but but you know, I, I think a lot of people and a lot of systems that perhaps weren't necessarily fully integrated or fully adopting the the, the use of technologies are now or or have and a lot of things that were niche whether it was remote learning or remote working are, are now very much mainstream but of course, with that brings uh, a lot of other challenges. So, so we're it's a bit of cat and mouse, really. Usually, the governance and and the security side is chasing the, the, the cat of technology. Oh, sorry, the mouse of technology, because the cat chases the mouse. I'm, I'm getting my my metaphors mixed up. Uh, but but yes, we're we're at the stage where we really now that we have this real uh, high impact or high level of impact from technology. With society, we really need to be able to bridge that gap, or, or bring the governance and the, the the you know the standardization and, and and the trustworthiness, at least in line with the design and deployments of the technology, rather than deploying the technology and then seeing where it's failing and then trying to fix it and have a band aid solution afterwards. I see. Okay, great. No, you definitely did answer the question. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> uh, that's interesting how, you know, you, you need to really start with the design of things rather than putting band-aids on. Um, and I'm wondering, like, what, what really keeps you up about this? What worries you potentially um, about where we're going with cybersecurity? And, and maybe, 
especially in relation to children, given that you know, you're heading up the, the, the group in, uh, maybe we can call it trustworthy tech for kids. I think it was mentioned with something like that. Yeah. Um, what, what, do you, what, do you, what are you kind of worried about happening potentially? Yeah, so I guess, I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to be, you know, the naysayer or, you know, the harbinger of, of, of doom, because of course I, I do believe that technology can be a force for good. But um, I think as with most things, there, there's a dichotomy. And for all of the good that technology can bring, um, there is perhaps an equal measure of, of um, not so good <laughs> that it could facilitate. So what keeps me up? I think it's really um, running before we can walk. I, I am all for lightning levels of progress, especially when it comes to um, perpetuating progression in the global south and, and underrepresented groups and and you know and and you know the, the UN SDGs and, and the really really important things that we need to be focusing on in my opinion uh, in the world but um if we walk if we run before we can walk so, so like as I said the, the technologies are developed we, we tend to um have this uh tech solutionism approach to 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 technology where you know, we, we, we find a new technology or we create new technology and then we, we try and stick it in somewhere. And like I mentioned before, we deploy it and then it runs really well. And then usually when we start seeing failings, we try and figure out what the problem is. And what scares me with that, traditionally that might not have been as bad of a problem if we're talking about certain, you know, data sets or, or databases and some information might be leaked, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really impact you that much. But now, when we're talking about, you know, we're on the precipice of a full virtual presence, you know, the conversations of metaverse, we're talking about governments and agencies having full sets of, of you know, data sets of personal biological data, uh, um, you know, all, all, all of that sort of data, not just to a mention um, or um, not forgetting things like you know, remote learning and algorithmic out use of algorithms to determine what information is being um, uh, delivered to, to individuals. So if we're relying on remote learning and certain things that, that our, our children or, or young people are, are, are being delivered, then who is governing the delivery of that information and what sort of information is being delivered? And of course, the, you know, the, the accuracy of that information. And everyone obviously is familiar with disinformation and, 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 and that concept. But that, that, that really worries me is that you know, the train is, could run away, you know, run away from the station. And at the moment, we don't necessarily have adequate brakes. So, so, so for me, it's about taking a moment and actually thinking about, well, obviously not just thinking about how we can actually do things better, but actually, actually doing that. And that, of course, it's easy for me to, to, to preach that, to say that, oh, of course, we, you know, we need to think about what we're doing. And, but, and a lot of these challenges aren't easy or, or simple. But that's also why I think we really need to um, think about this in a transdisciplinary way. So, and this links into my point earlier about cybersecurity being overarching and holistic, because cybersecurity has stemmed from technology and, of course, a lot of people like myself who are engineers, you know, engineers and technologists and know the technology uh, and that side of things. But if we're thinking about human intersectionality, then we need to be including, uh, you know, uh, anthropologists, psychologists, um, you know, teachers, uh, policy makers, um, you know, everyone really from, from the spectrum to really uh, uh, convalesce and, and you know, really figure out what the problem is and look at things from a different perspective, especially if, because the technologies that we're deploying are being used, or, or at least they will be used by everyone, not, not just a, a small subsect of, of, of uh, society. Got it. Okay, so you're worried about running before we can walk, essentially, and going through things too quickly, um, making things that then need later to be fixed and, and not actually including uh, many people in the discussion that actually need to be there to discuss these issues. So I guess if you could have like a perfect world, 
<laughs> what could make the situation better right now? Um, like if, yeah. what, what, what would you propose? Like maybe an example of something um, that, that's happening that you know of. I, I know you know you have so many examples of things that you've worked on um, and experienced. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure, and um, yeah. So, so as I said, I mean, I mean, of course, a perfect world, a, a utopia. I think it's that in itself is a dangerous concept. I, I think the pursuit of happiness is perhaps um, where we should be, as opposed to actually being being at at that endpoint. But that said, um, I think I've touched upon it before when it comes to collaboration. And also think, especially thinking about it from a, from a children's perspective, because a lot of the product services platforms that are, and, and even games, education platforms, whatever it is that are being used and or designed for kids, it's just that they're being designed for kids. It's usually an adult. It's, it's usually someone like me who has an idea of what a child might want or use. Um, and it's rare that the child or the young person is actually devolved, involved in that process and that, and that evolution. Uh, so, so really redesigning, redesigning the, the design process, I think is, is, one, is one good example of that, of, of really rethinking how do we actually create something that is not just fit for purpose, but is, is, is a bit more future-proof. How do we engage with all of the, all of the different stakeholders, that, as, I, as I mentioned before? Um, how do we bake in security pr uh, principles and processes at the design stage rather than a Band-Aid solution afterwards once we've already built whatever it is that, that we're building? So as you mentioned, for examples, I think from an IEEE perspective, of course, um, the examples are programs like the Industry Connections program, because of course, that brings together these stakeholders to ask these tough questions and to work on what this could look like a lot because a lot of this stuff hasn't been designed so it's very conceptual in, in its abstract so how do we take these abstractions whether they're from research or or, or case studies and build some you know create the framework that can be buildable and, and this work can then lead to the standardization work which then of course governs and steers industry and, and what's important as well is to ensure that this is, when I say collaborative, it truly is collaborative. So it's not just a matter of IEEE and you know, heretics like myself who are shit rattling the cage and, and, and you know, demanding change, that this also comes from you know, government, from stakeholders, from NGOs who are advocating for you know, the, the various different uh, topics, but also then you know, the market in the industry, the companies that are working in this space. I think companies, um, without being too controversial, I think the industry generally has a tendency to turn a blind eye or at least um, conveniently, you know, take the path of least resistance um, and find that the loopholes or the gray areas of, cert of, of certifications or compliance or, or regulations in order to deliver or create a particular product. And, you know, when you're looking at terms of service or terms and conditions now are a perfect example of that. I mean, there. I can count the number of people on my hand or on my fingers, but the number of people that actually read through all, you know, 45 pages of the terms and conditions for, you know, a music streaming platform. Um, and, uh, and that links to the element of trust, right? Because of course, a lot of the time you think, well, it's, it's from this brand or this manufacturer, or it's doing this thing. So, you know, what are the, what's the worst that can happen? Of course, I'm going to agree to that. Um, and that I think is quite exploitative because, um, why do you, you know, why do you need to hire an attorney to go through terms and conditions to help you figure out whether or not you should be using a service? It should be in a really plain and understandable way. So I think that's really what um, you know that if if there was like a, a gift or or like I say this pursuit of of, of utopia, it would be that just resetting, recalibrating, going back to plain, straightforward, you know, transparent ways of, of doing things where people are actually are making things understandable not necessarily explainable because a lot of the technologies are difficult to explain unless you have various degrees but understandable and how it's being used and who is using it and why i think a lot of people are quite happy to share their data for example if they actually know who's using it and why they're using it I don't, yeah, but a lot of the time that doesn't happen Okay, that's that's fascinating. It it reminds me of uh, food labels that someone mentioned before that we could have instead of the forty six pages. <laughs> um, 
But um, I realize we are quickly running out of time. So I wonder if there's just one very short, uh, maybe even tweet sized wrap up that you might want to give um, to put this all into a nutshell. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just interrupt you for one second? I see that Nele has a question. Um, do you think that there is a shift how we think about distinguishing and connecting security and safety concerns? Maybe we'll end on that. I'm Absolutely. sorry, I didn't see that earlier. No, no, that's fine. And and, and that is a good question. Yes, I, I, I think there is a shift. Um, well, there always has been a shift. I think the biggest shift is actually um, how we think about the, the you know the security and the use of our of our data so before we were always used to talk i say we always we still do talk about privacy you know protecting our data and an anonymity you know we, we don't let people see what it is that we're doing i think it's safe to say now that with the current deployments of technology that agencies governments public entities companies whoever have our data so now it's shifting from privacy to agency so it's not about it's not about protecting or anonymizing the data, but governing who uses it and why and how, and 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 giving yeah you know, and thinking of consent. So yes, if a government or a private entity has my data by whichever means by my interactions with that public service or, or or solution, that's fine. But then for me, giving my consent to use it, but also that consent you know still being available through the process. So it might be that later on I decide that actually. I don't like this company anymore, or I don't like this service anymore, or I don't necessarily like this particular, you know, element. So I, I withdraw my consent for the use of my data, you know, in, in this type of deployment. So I think right now it, it's very, it, it's binary. It's, it's yes or no. Do you agree? Yes. And, you know, the floodgates are open and they take it away and do whatever they want with it. So, you know, again, then, so there's nuance. So yeah, that's very much, I think, that that's where the that's where the biggest shift is. There's a lot of other um, things that we could probably go into around security and safety, but I think it's once we once we I think are really I fully I guess accept that that mindset. I think the tone of the conversation and also the focus changes because again this links back to the wider cybersecurity issue where it's not just a technological deployment or, or you know anymore. It's beyond that. It's looking at governance and and and, and, and the how and, and, and the why more importantly more than anything else so that answer isn't really a tweet sized answer um but if i was to give you the 150 characters or less i'll probably say transparent trustworthiness is um is is what i think we need to have uh, in you know transparent collaborations between multiple stakeholders and parties um where you know where it's beyond vested interest you know, we and and also having the uncommon and underrepresented uh, view within the discussion. It's not a problem if you have naysayers as well as the assayers in, in the room. Yeah, they should be there. It should, these shouldn't be echo chambers of everyone agreeing to design, design something. We really need to have these conversations of not just whether can we design it, but should we? And if we should, which a lot of the time I believe we should, then how do we do it in a way that's fair and transparent and representative and secure and safe? Um, you know, this is really you know, where we should be at. And I don't think enough of that is done. We have a lot of platitudes and declarations of how great things are going to be, or we're going to do this, that, and the other. And then it, you know, we, we get the white paper and then nothing happens after that. So, so yeah, we really need to um, make things tangible. Great. Well, thank you so much. That was um, an excellent uh, listening to you and hearing hearing about this. It seems like trust is incredibly important, and we can do that through designing together and bringing stakeholders together and just having straightforward consent and have everything be transparent and clear, even if it's not everyone agreeing with everyone else. So Really, thank you so much, Nishan. This has been a, a very interesting conversation. And thank you so much to all, everyone who came. Um, and especially thank you, Nile, for your question. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all in various different sessions going forward. Thanks so much. And thank, thank you. you very much, Nishan. Thank you, Kristen.
Take care. Bye.